Where must somebody, somebody say it? The word for tonight is none without sin. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all were guilty. Sin, to miss the mark, to err, to do something you know is not right, that you don't have any business doing. If it's not of faith, the word say it is sin. Come short means that we do not measure up to the expectation of God. We fall short. Why? Due to the fall of man. No matter how good we are or no matter how good we think we are, we still cannot measure up to the standards of God. All our works are as fifty rags outside of God. Glory, meaning that the favor and the approval of God. And the only way that we have the approval of God is because of the price that Jesus Christ paid at Calvary and rose from the dead with all power in his hand. So, therefore, it takes God. It takes Jesus. Without him, we need to understand that we are nothing. We can do nothing. We're just like a ship without a sail. We need him in every area of our lives. In 1 John chapter 1, it talks about walking in light, walking in darkness, mean living in the light and living in darkness. 1 John 1, 8 say, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. John said, you, you, you're telling a lie if you say you don't have any sin. We all have sin. The difference is between the born-again believer, they're not supposed to live a lifestyle of sin. Not saying they don't sin, but the good thing about it is that the words say, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not saying that we want to sin, but sometimes we do sin. But thank God for Jesus. And in verse 10, it says, if we say that we have not sinned, that's past tense, because we all have. We make him a liar, and his word is not in us. That's saying that he's not in us, because we know that Jesus is the word, right? So if we're going around saying we don't sin, we just tell him a lie. And Jesus is not in us, because how can Jesus be in you and you say you don't sin when you know that you have sin. Not that you go around sinning every day or living a lifestyle of sin. But sometimes things happen. Sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes we say things that we don't have any business doing. Sometimes we do things we don't have any business doing. But as I said, if it's not a faith, then the word say it is sin. If we confess our sins, he will forgive us. The Father will forgive us in the name of Jesus. Not because our works, not because we think we're so good and we think we're so holy. We are only who we are because of Jesus. We are righteous because of Jesus. Chapter 2. States, my little children, these things write out unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, just in case you might sin, not that you tried to sin, but you know how the devil is and how temptation is, how it works. But just in case you do, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. No one is condoning sin. Because sin is not good. Amen. But we have an advocate saying that we have someone who will intercede for us, stand in the gap for us, speak on our behalf to the Father for us. And thank God that we do. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for him paying that price for us. In the contemporary English version, it reads, My children, I am writing this so you won't sin. But if you do sin, Jesus Christ always, always 
does the right thing and he will speak to the father for us hallelujah praise god and in verse 2 it reads and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world not just for those that are born again but he is the propitiation for the whole world it's already there the only thing that we have to do is come to the the reality the knowledge of the truth that it's already there for us we just need to accept the truth and begin to walk in it so jesus christ atones for us he cleanses us he take away amen the sin he take away the sin consciousness he take away the guiltiness in the contemporary english version it reads christ is the sacrifice that takes away our sins and the sins of the whole world people everybody in first corinthians chapter 15 3 jesus christ died for our sins it took Jesus then, and it still takes Jesus now. His blood, the word to wash us, to cleanse us, to pray for us. Without him, as I said before, we are nothing. No matter how high we are, no matter how low we are, no matter what we have, no matter what we do not have, it still takes Jesus. No matter how holy we may think we are, but the word tells us to be holy for I am holy. So we have to be holy. But we are righteous because of Jesus. We are in right standing with God because of Jesus. Not by works, lest any man shall boast. But it was because of the blood. Jesus. When he see the blood, he passes over us. Has the blood been applied? Because the blood is safety. The blood is protection. The blood is of Jesus none without sin outside of Jesus for we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God but if we confess our sins he will forgive us in Jesus name 